I, I'm Marty McGinley. I'm a district administrator for Wheatland School District. Um, I live in Burlington, uh, 273 Carl Street, uh, Burlington, Wisconsin. So, um, trying to keep things as, as uncomplicated as possible. I'll just give you a little bit of history. Uh, I've been in the district for about 14 months, uh, actually a little more than that now. So I started last July, uh, previous July. And when I got there, it was, it was really clear that uh, we had a referendum coming off. There had been $300,000 for the last previous eight years to that. Um, and due to uh, growth and, and some of the things that were going on in the, in the community, I think, and with the school, uh, the board decided to not go back for a referendum um, in hopes that uh, we could make it a go of, uh, of it with, with what we currently have. Um, that was not the case. As I started to dig a little bit deeper, uh, we were not going to be able to survive as a school district without a referendum. So the board talked about what that would look like um, moving forward. We went through a process, talked about um, how much a referendum we would need to have in order to, to be, uh, have a sustainable future uh, in, in the Wheatland area. Um, so we went back to referendum in April. Um, we had lost that $300,000 that we had, currently, we had previously had on, um, on, on our ongoing referendum or eight-year referendum. Uh, and so we went back in April and that uh, referendum did not pass. Uh, so the board had some choices. Um, they could move forward uh, with another referendum. They could make some cuts. Um, they could look at dissolving the school district. Uh, or they could look at some kind of consolidation. So there's really only so many options. Um, the board, because a lot of things have been going right in Wheatland, uh, Wheatland School District, um, we've had a huge renewal of, of students coming in. For a long time, there was a declining enrollment, so the enrollment was going down, down, down. Um, we have 100 more students this year than we did two years ago. Uh, we're going to have almost 500 students. And we're going from 25 open enrollment students to 125 this, this fall. So we're able to catch up on some of that revenue through open enrollment, and that's been huge. Um, but you, there's only so much you can do underneath the revenue limit. Understand a revenue limit. Essentially, there's a, a line set, and you can only only request that much money from the public. Depending on how much aid goes up, or depending on how much the tax levy is, it doesn't matter. There's a revenue limit that's a line right here. So when they looked at that, and the board looked at the options, they wanted to keep the programming in place um, because the school is. It, it's kind of had a renaissance in the last five years. The student achievement's gone up. We've got lots of uh, families who are open enrolling in. Uh, it's an amazing place, you know, just being there for a short period of time. Uh, so they decided, the board decided to go back um, for another referendum, but make some pretty drastic cuts and make some tough cuts. So this past year, uh, we made over $200,000 worth of cuts to the budget. Uh, very tough, very difficult, laid off some people. Um, Several teachers went from full-time to part-time. Several aides lost their insurance and went to part-time. We eliminated a technology coordinator position. Many, many uh, difficult cuts. We're taking back our special ed services from CESA, um, which has been a, a difficult and, and process because it was a great, great program. Uh, however, we're able to save some money doing that. Uh, and we think we can provide for those kids as well right in our school. So, um, so after doing that, uh, the goal of the board was to come back to a number in a referendum that would not have a tax increase. So a zero tax impact on the levy uh, so, that, um, so that we'd be providing a service to the community but also doing it economically. So that's what the board was able to do. We went and looked at several forecast models. I enlisted the help of Dave Betts at Wilmont and some other business managers because we really wanted to look at what that would look like moving forward for the next four years because our state aid went up a lot this year. Um, the property tax, you know, the property values, as you know, went down 6% here. Um, so our piece of the pie of the state aid uh, was bigger. But we were not able to do anything with that or access that without raising that line that I was talking about. Okay, so our state aid was here, it went up, the levy is here, the levy would have been pinched by that, so we have to raise the revenue limit so we can have the same levy that we currently have. So we're asking for $625,000 a year for four years, uh, and it will 
not have an impact on the local levy, meaning that your school-based taxes will not increase for four years. Um, so that's what I've been trying. It's a kind of a, a complicated thing. School-based funding and school uh, school funding is very, very complicated. Um, I think if people, you know, were honest about what they've heard in the community about Wheatland School uh, in the last five years, uh, it's been really, really positive. Um, that's one of the reasons I came here because I knew it was on a Wheatland School's run the rise. We've done some amazing, amazing things, um, and I think. To, for the board to say that they're going to come back and, and do that at, at no levy impact or no tax impact, I think was the right thing for this community at this time too. So, um, you know, I can field any questions or answer any questions. I'm really here just to, to inform you of that. Um, one of the things that I just will point to is on here, this is the open enrollment trending on that front page. And enroll, open enrollment was in 2008-9 was about 20 kids. And like I said before, we have 125 students. There is no district in the state that has had that kind of a influx in open enrollment. And that must mean something about what's going on there. I mean, that's amazing. Invite them to take a tour. Yeah, anybody Look, can come anytime. Our children are engaged, they're thriving, but it just takes the community to help us. I was talking to multiple superintendents over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and I come from a small community, um, Platteville, which is the western part of the state. And I was just recently at a reunion this weekend in, a, in an area that has really small schools as well, Richland Center, Ithaca. They just went to a referendum, Ithaca did. And we are kind of in a tough spot because we don't have that community center in that we don't have a, a big town. We, we have multiple, you know, we have 30 square miles spread over our whole district. We have two high schools that we feed into, so nobody's like, you know, it's all about Wilmot, or it's all about, Cent you know, it's, it's Wheatland, and we're, we don't have that kind of community engagement. Now, we, we really try. We've had a, a lot of uh, community-based programs that we've had in the school. Um, you know, I, I, we have our annual meeting tomorrow night, and that'll be a lot longer presentation, uh, so I'll, I'll kind of keep it short, but um, it, it's a really an amazing thing that, that has happened over the course of the last several years. So. What happens if it passes? What happens if it fails? Where will the 625,000 come from? If it's not <coughs> the, current tax money. the current levy. So, so our, our funding is based on state aid <coughs> and the local levy. Okay, our local levy this year was about three million three hundred and thirty-seven thousand something something something. Okay, so our state aid went up by four hundred thousand dollars. <coughs> So if you pinch that levy, you know, if, if, you're, if you look at the levy that we currently have and the revenue limits here, you're going to have to take, we're going to have to take $400,000 out of the levy uh, in order to keep the revenue limit where it's at, and we can't function as a school. Um, we are down to $60,000 in our fund balance. Uh, that's less than 1%. I think what people aren't understanding, though, is that once you get more money from the state, then you can only take a certain amount of money in, so you have to cut, the, unless we raise this past the right. thing. So right. you have to allow for the extra money coming in as an extra. <coughs> I mean, that's, yeah. well, you can only, say they're, say they're collecting a million dollars yeah. on the levy. Okay, so they get around figures, they get 250000 from the state. They have to drop the levy to 750000 because their limit is a million. So however you use the figures, it would be the same. <coughs> this is a little bit complicated. So this is the current, um, currently this is the most Without the referendum, the levy is in, uh, in blue right here, okay? And it's gonna drop off because this yellow has gotten bigger this year. And this red line is all we can spend without the referendum. So for eight years, we were spending over what the state would tell us we were spending because they went to referendum for four and they went for another four. Um, that's, that was then gone for two years now. So our our levy actually would drop 300 plus another $400,000. So the 300 prior, um, no, that we're not getting that. We're not getting it. So we could fill that and we, you know, the board, I, I would guess that if that didn't pass, 
the board would still fill the levy, and, and it wouldn't raise the levy, but would fill it because we saw the debt we could pay off, but none of that money could go towards kids. It's in separate buckets. There's Fund 10, Fund 39, Fund 39 is our debt, our, how we pay off our debt. Fund 10 is the money that goes for kids. So we can't raise money in Fund 10 without raising that revenue them. Because we've already, we already have a referendum for, uh, for the building that happened, the middle school building back in 1997, I believe. That referendum is still on the books. And that was for about $3,500,000 something like that. We're, we're almost paid off with that. We've got three years left. Now we could, we could raise that at any time. We could say we have a million two left, we're paying it this year. Taxes are going up. I mean, the board could do that. But obviously that's not, you know, like a house payment, you don't pay it off at once, you pay it little by little. See, we can do that too. You know, you, yeah. can, you can incur more debt and get it out of tax levy, but you can't just use it for operating. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a hard, it's a really hard thing for people to understand because they hear referendum, they think the taxes are automatically going up. And that's why we knew that the state aid was going up. So we were asking last time for $750,000 and it was only, and, and the, the levy was only going up a little bit. In fact, the first year it wasn't going up at all. It was, you know, over the course of the three years after that. So, remember, that many years ago was not Yeah. So, I, I didn't know I was going to get into all that, but I mean, at any time anybody wants to call me or talk to me, I've been trying to get out and talk to, you know, some of the leaders. One of the things, your question, to your question, we did not send out anything to the entire populace because it was pretty expensive. We we're trying to save money on that. Um, I'm trying to get people to the annual meeting tomorrow night where I can explain a lot of that. Doing mailing to the, the primary group of people who go to school. And then sending out um, a little uh, flyer, and I'll give this to you. And it's also an absentee ballot and a registration. So the person who opens it up, all they got to do is fill it out and it's give it a sheet. Simple stuff. And how are you sending that flyer out to mailboxes, poster boxes, or just to the ramp, to their home. I mean, you, you're using we, that. That's not the school. It's not associated with the school. It's not associated with the school. Okay. It's a group. Okay. But is it going to a certain address then? Or is it going just, because I remember getting some stuff just general mailing. Right? Yeah. Is that what this is going? Yeah. Yeah. But is that what, how this is going? Or is it going to an address? Like you have an address on the flyer. An address. On the flyer. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's going to a specific address. Mm -hmm. And that's all the property taxpayers in the town, I guess, so. Right. Because people ask us, you know, is there a dynamic clause that we can only use about it? And they say, well, you know, how can this happen without raising taxes? Well, you know, we have the same problem here. I mean, we're fighting City Hall trying to get money to, you know, clean up the snow and still so struggling today, from the tornado. What you're going to do is keep the levy the same. Right. And then, yeah. but the part that makes up the levy is changing. The A is going to be the bigger part of the lesson, right. or a bigger part of the, our, our so revenue. Adding to this, I think, raises the money. The levy is still the same, but you have more money coming in. Yeah, and most of that time is open enrollment. We're attracting so many more kids now, and with them comes money. Right. The, my, my hope would be that in four years, we would be able to. Uh, right now, if you remember back about seven years ago, Paris was in a similar situation, okay? And Paris, um, they talked about dissolving the school. Their, their issue was that they didn't have that open enrollment coming in. Well, now they're self-sustaining. They haven't had to go back since they had their referendum because they have all the Kenosha County or Kenosha area students coming in. Um, we, we are going to be uh, able to collect on every student, we, we get about $7,000. So each student we get in open enrollment helps us to get closer to not having to uh, go to referendum. Because the money from open enrollment is outside of the tax levy. That's not what we're doing. Seven thousand dollars per child? Seven. Seven, seven thousand for open seven enrollment. Nice. Yeah, seven would be nice. Uh, seven thousand for? It's 66, 6,600, five, uh, 60, 6,650. Yeah. So with open enrollment, like so with open enrollment, you say 6,500 or whatever. Yep. So every 100 uh, kids is uh, what's How many of you guys going up? Every 100 would be it's 
6,500, so it would be 6,500 for 10. So for 10, that's 6 million, or I mean 600,000. So Sheila just asked the question, how many we have going out, right? We've always had about 80 going out for the last 10 years. So on every one of those students, not only was our state aid going down because we had declining enrollment of our resident students, but they were going to other schools. So for every one of those kids, we lose that much. 80 per year. 80 per year. So now, last year was the first year that we netted out more kids in than out. So it was the first year we had a chance to make up a little bit of that money. So last year we got $650,000, I think, about $600,000 about $600, for open enrollment students, and we lost about $480,000. So we, we netted out about 100,000. I'm gonna say going out, we're eight, 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 eight graders going to Central, or we're going to other schools. Other schools, so they might go to Burlington, or Randall, so or- way out, because this year you said you have 125 more this year. No, 125 coming in. How many going out this year? 80. So you really only got 45 times the 65. Right, right. But it doesn't work that way, because the way we get the eight, $800,000 that we would get for the open enrollment, but then they take out of a different bucket, they take the, you know, 480000 So this it's is the first year. Yeah, bucket games over yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, the, this is the first, I mean, that's school finance for you. This is the first year that, last year's the first year we've netted out. This year we're going to net out an additional uh, amount. So it, it's a really, uh, that proposition, what I was going to say is four years down the road, I'm hoping that we can fill our classrooms with students that, you know, net out seven thousand dollars per student, and we won't have to uh, go back to the taxpayers. But that's what that's what Paris is able to do right now. So they have a limit of kids. They say we'll only take twenty six kids in the class. All right. We let's say we have twenty two in that class. We can take four more because uh, we we don't want to have a class of thirty five, but we can have a class of twenty six, and our resident students don't fill it. So we'll fill it to twenty six. And then, so we don't have to hire another teacher because that's costly. So we, there are, there is some room in there that we can continue to get over our own students. Well, not only that, I mean, the education the children are receiving, all that you can see it across the board on their test scores. And then the people who want to be, the people who are open and roll, they can bring the kids to the school. They want to do this. I mean, that should tell you something right there. It's impressive. I we encourage have, you to come and take a We trip. have parents driving from Kenosha. Um, we have parents from Burlington. Um, we have parents from all over. Um, I think we have 25 to 30 from Randall, uh, Lakeview, you know, probably 40. We have some from St. Allen's. We have some kids from St. Allen's. We're going to get more. Because they ain't going to be last, I'm afraid. A lot of those are yeah. resident schools, though. I mean, those are resident students, a lot of those. A lot of those are going to talk about the waiting because they're coming in from right. other areas. Too, so they might go somewhere. Well, because it is so confusing to just the average Joe like right. us, <laughs> uh, it's just really important that you share this information and knowledge with people because really, unless you're sitting here hearing it, you're just, you're ignorant to what's going on. So it's, it's important that you guys share the message and my, my hat's off to you because it's, it's important. Well, it's important too that you guys help us out and share because we can only do so much. And you guys are the leaders of the community. They're going to listen to you. I mean, Marty explained it very well. He did. Yeah. And we also have a better insight, so that's helpful for us. So. <laughs> we have our annual board meeting tomorrow night at 7. Um, I would guess I would encourage you to come and see more and then see what the school's all about. Um, Marty will do his presentation more in depth. I don't want to get over me. I mean, it got more in depth than I wanted, but if you had questions, I'd love, you know, you could call me at any time. If, if, if a resident has a question, have them call me. I love those, I love talking about Wheatland. I mean, it's, it's a great place. Um, and one of the things we're fighting is the history of, of Wheatland School, I think. You know, I think there was a time when, uh, I think residents right now should be proud of what they're doing for kids and, and the education they're giving them. Um, and if you look around, we're doing it we don't have the tax base that, that everyone else has. We don't have the lakes, you know, we don't have that. Um, it's it's a tougher, uh, we're, 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 we're a rural school, yeah. Okay. I can just have anybody with questions, call this one.
Absolutely. Right. Number seven two two one six. Yep. What's the time frame to call that number? Oh gosh, probably midnight. Seven. Four, seven. <laughs> seven to that's seven. School. That's the school. Yeah. Seven to seven. Yeah. And I and I I will return their call at any time. I got to say one thing. Your cars are a lot. So I know I go down that road ten times a day. So I know. And, I mean you're there late. So you're not. You know you, when school's out, when the bus is leaving, you don't go home. I mean you're there. And it's saying a lot. Just to play the second thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think most of us graduated from the Cleveland and the Santa Rosa. Well, Did you, Sheila? Say no. I beat you guys in basketball all the time. Yeah. Um, you do have some great teachers. We do. Yeah. I guess. You know, I know quite a few of them. And I, and I would the say they really have. In the last, last several years, um, the teachers we've got, you know, Jen Phillips is sitting here. She's a community person as well. We were able to bring her in. Um, and those two are sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Just the, she was. What yeah, does the state do? Is that every student is 66 something or whatever? No. Or that's just open enrollment. That's just open enrollment. What's the regular school? Um, it's about $10,000, like 9600 or something. So then on their second year, you get that amount. Like once they're enrolled, we get no. No. They're never, they're always open and rolled. They're never, so we're always, they stay in a different bracket. Yeah. Why is it less because the people that are bringing it from their community are paying school taxes or whatever in their community right. that they're thought of buying the state on that? Is that, yes. so we so, only get 6500 because that family brings it here, but they're still paying school taxes to let you say Bristol. Correct. Sure. Correct. That's why you only get 6500 right. or 6700 Right. Or so even, you know, they get 10000 over there in Bristol for, Local right. uh, the kids, but they have all that would be the same way. If somebody left Leland and was driving to Bristol, they would get the same 66 whatever. That's a state flight. Correct. Okay. And that's really that's a really smart observation because one of the things um, that like uh, a Lakewood who you know has lost a lot of they're under 400 students I think this year around 400 students um, and they've lost a lot of students. They still get three thousand dollars per student even if they're gone. So, you know, because they get 9,600 or, you know, almost $10,000 and they only pay out 6,500. So they still get about, they net out $3,000 even when the student's gone in the state funding formula. So it's, it's kind of a weird. Well, during that school, we would need a much longer meeting to go over. Yeah, we would. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, though, for the time. And I appreciate it. I appreciate what you guys do.